Let's fill up our stash of collage fodder. I want to make some jelly prints on packaging paper today that I'm going to dress up with some stamping and mark making later. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Thank you very much for joining me today here on my jelly plate. I need some collage fodder for some future projects, so I would like to fill up my stash of collage fodder today. If you're wondering what collage fodder means, I would like to explain that in a few words. <laughs> so that is relatively easy to explain because collage fodder is nothing else than some kind of food for your collage. So that means um, a bunch of papers that are very different, that are really random, I would say, that you can use to make collages. So collage fodder is everything that you can glue down in a collage. And one way to make collage fodder is, of course, using the jelly plate. And that's what I'm going to do today. And I would like to share my way to make collage fodder with the jelly plate. So I think there are many, many different ways to do that. And there are, of course, different techniques, even if you say jelly Printing is a technique, yeah, but on the jelly plate, there are so many different techniques and I would like to pick out some things that I really, really enjoy doing and that's what I want to show you today. Um, and there are not only different techniques that you can do with a jelly plate, of course, there are also different materials that you can use um, and yeah, different things from your stash that you can just take and use them on the plate. So um, let's start with the paper that I have chosen for today. As you can see, I have some packaging paper here today that are very different surfaces, I would say. This is relatively rough and I guess this soaks relatively uh, extremely. This is just some thinner packaging paper. Um, this is also something where some... Um, food was uh, packed in. I think that's that comes from a bakery. I got that uh, in as a gift, I guess. Um, I also have this green, really thin kind of tissue paper. I don't know if that will come off from the plate without tearing, but for collage fodder, that doesn't matter if it tears, so we can use that as well. Uh, by the way, this is just some stamping that I have made, so we can actually <laughs> also take this out. And we have this piece of collage fodder, <laughs> one done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, different kinds of packaging paper, some with prints, some really thin, some a little bit thicker. And I also have this uh, purple paper here that is from a banana box, I guess. No, sorry, this is from um, a beeswax uh, packaging. And... Um, I need some purple thingies for my future projects as well. So I thought I can use this paper because I have no purple paint. Uh, and I thought perhaps I can make some cool prints on this um, where the purple later on is showing through the actual print. Um, I have my acrylic paints there. I will tell you something about that, what I'm using there ex exactly uh, in a second when I put it to the plate. And I also have this box here. <laughs> Looks relatively strange, I know. In this box, there are all my jelly plate uh, accessories. Is that a word? All my tools, all my stamps and that stuff. These foam thingies I bought second hand and I have never tried them out on the plate. Uh, I have them uh, yeah, just for a short time and I thought we can perhaps try some of these. These are really really cute. Look at these uh, cool patterns here. Ooh, I don't know exactly where these come from so I can't tell you or perhaps let me check this. I think it's it comes from from this brand here. This thing doesn't say that, but I think that this belongs to those all of those black foams that you can see here. This is called Art Foamies. This is the website. website. 
artfomies.com if you want to check them out. I don't know if they um, still exist or, or I, yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I got this when I bought these secondhand. And in here, there are really cool patterns and I want to try them out today for the first time. What I also have here is some bubble wrapping. So I have taken this out for all of you out there who don't have such things. I mean, this is, I would say, a relatively fancy thingy <laughs> that you can use uh, on your plate. Um, but what I'm trying to say is if you don't have such things, of course, you can also use some things that you can find in your house, like bubble wrapping or other packages. I have also these both. I don't know if you can see what that is. This comes from a um, Tim Holtz ephemera thing made out of wood. So these are those uh, letterpress letters. <laughs> they were in here. And these. Um, this is from those numbers made out of wood. Sorry, you can't see anything. Perhaps I should show you the original thing that was in the package. Then you could perhaps imagine what I'm talking about. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so let's just... Ah, I can't take it out. <sighs> so these are the numbers or one of the numbers. They look like this. They are mounted on this wood here. And these are the letterpress things. Those little letters also on wood. And these were in these both packages and I thought perhaps we can get a cool print of those numbers and letters on the plate so uh, what I want to say is you can also of course use things that you can find in your house um, or you can also make your own thingies like this um, for example you could use um, a die cut or something like that and just cut a piece out and uh, mount that on a really sturdy surface and then you can use that on your plate as well. This is not uh, cut by hand, I guess, but you could imagine, of course, that you can uh, just cut that with your scissors out of some foam or even um, thicker paper would work or cardstock would be perhaps better. Glue some layers on top of each other so that you get such a little uh, stamp here and then you can use that on the plate as well. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start with this. So the first color that I want to use is some turquoise and green. I have this vintage paint here. This is from uh, from a local store, um, I guess. Well, I, I, I I even can't remember from there from where this is. This is from Action and this is some Winsor and Newton green and this is uh, some Schminke acrylic paint. So I want to use these greens with my first print. Why is here a hair? I mean, come on. I mean, uh, you can use what you have, but hair is not so good, I would say. <laughs> I'm using really different brands of paint, but I think that really doesn't matter. Um, I think you can use what you want and what you like. So uh, let's try this one first. I think that is a really cool pattern. So I will press this down. <laughs> I think that worked relatively well. You can't see that, sorry. Okay, so I have some space here in between and I want to take something else and press that there. So for example, this one here, that looks really cool and I think that works relatively well with the other pattern. Then I'm letting this dry completely. Okay, so that looks good. Um, and now I want to go on with another green. I'm using this olive green here. So. so I really don't know what will happen here because these colors are different, but at the same time relatively similar. I mean, these are all greens at the moment and I'm really curious how that will look in the end. 
So I will let this dry again. And for the last layer, I think I want to use some really dark green mixed with some gray. I have this gray here. Perhaps I will also add some black. Let's see. I want to have that really, really dark so that um, the first two layers come out really well in the end. Oh, let's add some gray at the same time. Ooh, what's that? So this last layer I'm going to make a little bit thicker so that I can lift that up with the paper really really easily. I hope that that will work. <laughs> it's always a surprise. So let's start perhaps with this normal packaging paper. Mm, that soaks relatively extremely. That feels relatively dry, so let's see if that has worked. <laughs> so I can't see anything of my beautiful pattern. We have to do that again in a second. But what we can see is the rest of my paint that I had left on the plate from my jelly print session that I made the other day. So um, here you can see, of course, that's nothing that I have added to the plate before. But this is what came off from, yeah not cleaning the plate do you know what i mean but um, we can't see the actual pattern that we had on this foam thingy but what we can try is and i mean this looks great <laughs> i like such things um but what we can try is we can print over this and that's what i'm going to do now So let's see. Why is this so not so clear? I mean, this is here. This is really great. I mean, this is a great piece of collage fodder, isn't it? That looks really, really awesome. But here, why is that so not concrete? Why is that so so blurry and and not blurry, but <sighs> strange? Okay, so we have to try that again. Can't live with that. We have yellow here, so we, ha we have to take off this yellow color first. So uh, how do we do that? We take some of this. <sighs> I don't know what's happening here, but... I am realizing that always when I work with the jelly plate, I need some prints before I'm getting to something that I like. Do you know what I mean? I, I have some really strange experiences with failed prints and I have the feeling that every jelly plate session starts the same, like exactly what I'm experiencing here so that the things don't work like I want them <laughs> to work and that I need, yeah, I don't know, time or whatever. Uh, and then some in, in the next second it works. That's so strange. So let's go with some red perhaps. When I started this video, I was in this I need something relaxing mood. <laughs> Do you know that? I thought I need something that brings me down a little bit because I came from a five hour video call with Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you very much for the video call. And that was already the second video call. I mean, the second video call that took us five hours. So I thought perhaps I can do something relaxing. I mean, 
don't panic it's everything is okay yeah we had something to uh, discuss and it was very great but it was also really difficult and and you know nerve-wracking <laughs> even if it was really much fun okay so even if this was really really dry this paper seems to um you know leave relatively much paint on the plate as you can see but the result is really cool even if i have expected something totally different but here we can see this thing from the uh foamy thing now that looks really cool i really like that the red looks a little bit strange but that's okay for me that's great fodder i would say so we can try now to get this off from the plate just ooh, just by adding some more color so i'm using this yellow here i think i will have some gray oh that was perhaps a little bit much i wanted to have some kind of an orange but can i mix that here directly on the plate i don't know we will see so And if you perhaps are wondering why I have spoken with Barbara so long and why our video chat um, has taken us five hours, I have a little surprise for you. Yes, because there was a special reason why we have talked so long and that's something... <laughs> I can't say it directly because I want to have this, you know, this feeling. <laughs> Do you know this feeling? <laughs> so, um, many of you have asked for that what I'm going to tell you now many of you have waited for that really really long and now we are so proud I think I can speak for both of us we are so proud that we can tell you that we are going to do a second round of Defemoramba If you're new to my channel or new to Barbara's channel, Defemoramba is a really, really cool thing in December. And it's all about making ephemera for your junk journal. So that's where this name Defemoramba comes from. December plus ephemera is Defemoramba. And we are going to create junk journal ephemera and you can craft along with us. That is, I would say, the biggest collaboration that I have ever done. We have done that last year and we will do it this year again, as I said. And that is definitely the biggest thing that I have ever done on YouTube. And that was also that thing that was, I would say, the most popular thing on my channel and on Barbara's, I, I think, on Barbara's channel as well. Please, Barbara, correct me if that is not correct. Um, and we are so proud that we can tell you that we will do that again. We will give you some more information about that in the future, of course. But that was the reason why we have talked so long. And this is absolutely amazing. Barbara, what do you think about this? Ha ha. Collage for the deluxe. <laughs>
so let's take this one with the letters and numbers first. Ooh, really slippery. Oh, yeah. So I want to try that on this purple paper here. I think that worked really well. So here we have a little leftover from, uh, left, not leftover, but a little, only a little piece from here. But this looks really great as well. I think this is a great fodder piece. So here I guess the paint was already too dry when I put the paper on top. Um, but this looks cool as well. Here we can see an M. That is not so bad. Oh, and that, that is just cool. Hopefully you can see that in the camera as well. Oh my goodness, that is just great. In the camera it has not so much contrast like in reality, but perhaps I can go a little bit closer so that you can see that. That is really, really cool. For a background, for example, for a collage, this would be just perfect. And also the contrast with the purple. I really like that. That is really cool. And I think I will leave this as it is. I mean, we could go over this with something else to make it, yeah, to, to get more contrast. But I really like it as it is. This is great. Oh my goodness. Oh! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah. So this is absolutely amazing. That looks so, so cool. Even if my camera can, again, not catch, uh, catch those colors, especially here. In reality, that looks just awesome. This is... Oh. And also these, you know, where the paper was a little bit crumbled. That looks so cool. So next I would like to dress this up a little bit. And for that I want to use some stamps. And I want to make some marks to my prints. So um, let's see, where do we start? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take a stamp. This has... A relatively um, big uh, big letters here that I want to stamp here a little bit I'm using a permanent ink because that is I guess the best thing that you can do on acrylic paint and now I'm stamping really randomly I don't want to have the same design on every print so I'm jumping from one print to the other and if I have a stamp that I like then I can go here and there and stamp where I think that it looks great for this kind of technique it's a good idea I would say um, to use letters or handwriting, uh, hand, handwriting on, uh, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, different sizes of of the stamp designs, um, and I think the more different things you can find that you want to stamp, the more interesting it can get in the end. But I'm also trying to get the same design on in different places because of course these both would work really well together later in a collage and so I have more variations for this whole thing <clears throat> and what I also really like is 
when you take the stamp that you have chosen and then stamp to this area where you have the paint here and the plain paper here so imagine or I can actually do it we would just tear this off then we have a really interesting piece where we have this print here the stamp here and nothing here so that we have three different things on one piece of collage fodder and that is for me really really interesting to use in collages or other projects another thing that I really like to do is mark making so here I have the most boring tool for mark making that's a paintbrush <laughs> but of course you can also use any other tool that you can use to make some marks to your uh, scraps or to your fodder um, you could use some wooden sticks or um, other tools even uh, yeah an awl would work if you do that carefully or something else perhaps some uh, wooden sticks that you can find outside those all of those natural materials of course would work really really well <clears throat> um, I've chosen the simplest thing here for today and then I'm just going uh, in here and there and I'm leaving some of of my marks here you could also do it like this and just play around What you also can do is you can take the back of your paintbrush and then just go in and scribble along here a little bit and perhaps you're wondering why I'm using my left hand normally of course I would use my right hand but with this technique using your left hand you have not so much control over what you are doing and uh, that is good because then it looks really artsy <laughs> and now as you can see I'm doing really different things so here I've made these lines here I've tried to make some crosses and here this just dipping it like this um, so that the marks that I'm leaving here are really really different and not all the same so later on when I use this collage fodder I have way more things to play with than when I would do um, the same marks on every paper and hmm, here I guess white would be cool as well and I want to try something uh, here now so I want to uh, take my hand and I'm putting uh, my you know my finger like this I'm going in into the paint like this and I'm just pre pressing this here looks a little bit weird but I think that's that's great <laughs> When you do that with your finger, um, you get a really interesting texture on some of those marks. Here it's not so extreme, but here I did it with my finger, here uh, with this finger, um, and I've just pressed it down. And can you see this texture here? I think that looks really, really cool. And when, when, this, when this is dry, you can also feel it. And I really like to include those things into my collages because, yeah, that makes it even more interesting when you have this texture there I mean that is texture for free <laughs> another really cool technique making some marks is the following yeah so I'm just taking the paper and I'm crumbling that up a little bit and then I'm taking some gilding wax and I'm just going over this uh, with my finger So I'm just going over this really carefully because I don't want to massage that into the paper but I just want to have it on this higher parts of the crumbled 
things. And then when we open it up again, now I will let this dry. I can't go over that with my finger to make it complete, completely flat. Otherwise I would smear the wax now. But I think you can imagine this effect. Um, this of course looks totally the same when it's dry, but when it's totally dry, you can flatten the paper completely if you want, or you could leave it um, like this and use it in, in your collage or other projects. After finishing those techniques on the different whole sheets of packaging paper, I like to tear them up into smaller pieces, as you can see here. So... Um, I like to do that because for me it's easier to store those smaller pieces in my stash. I have a box where all these pieces will go in and then I will mix them up with the other things that I already have in my stash of collage fodder so that this whole box in the end gets really um, interesting. There are really interesting and, and different pieces in there. Of course, not only jelly printed pieces of collage fodder. In this box, there's everything. Um, and <clears throat> I like to have them is in this smaller scale because for me, this is more inspiring. When I have this, perhaps you can imagine that, um, this or even smaller pieces of this, it's... <sighs> You know, you have this feeling of seeing different things at the same time and then you can say, okay, this is good for my collage for today or perhaps I have a bigger piece like this one and I would like to put that on a tag as a background or on a journaling card. So I like to have smaller pieces and bigger pieces, but not the whole sheet. Um, but of course, that's personal preference, how you want to store these pieces if you are the person that needs this whole sheet then please store it as a whole sheet yeah so um perhaps if you are a beginner or if you want to try something new this could be a trick to boost your creativity a little bit so perhaps you want to try something new then try to tear this up and mix uh, everything together so that you have this whole bunch of things that you can use i think that can be really inspiring especially when you are not sure what you want to do today or if you're not sure in which direction your project shall go then try to tear your fodder um, that sounds relatively simple or perhaps a little bit strange as well but for me it's really really helpful and these smaller pieces for example this is a really really good example for that <clears throat> here we have only these few marks and the rest is the print. We have a little space here where we can do something um, totally different, some more stamping or other things. And this as this small piece is something that can speak to you and where you think, okay, this is something that I want to use today. If you have the whole sheet, then perhaps this is not standing out so much and it's not speaking so loud <laughs> to you as when you um, have it in this size. But that's only a personal thing that I can suggest. You can, of course, do it like you want it. You will see some of this collage fodder in my future videos. I will do some projects with this. So if you want to follow me there, of course, I will, would be really, really happy. I hope you like this and I hope we will see the next time with some more junk journal ideas. So have a great day and see you.